everybody. Good morning. How are you? Hope you're having a lovely day. It is a bit cooler today than it was yesterday. Yesterday was a hot one here in Oregon. Oh my goodness. I was just sitting here sweltering and thinking, please, can we just have a cool wind come through? Thank you very much. <laughs> so I woke up this morning and Chantal had posted another video. And it was a mukbang, a Wendy's mukbang. <laughs> I've got so many thoughts. I really do. I also went to Twitter and I was looking around on Twitter and saving different tweets from different people. And so that's we're gonna, what we're going to go over today. I'm not going to react to Chantal's mukbang video. What's the point? I I'm not going to subject you guys to that. There's no reason to it. There's why? What for? I'm not going to put you guys through that kind of torture. Watching her eat. We all know how she eats. She's not the most graceful of eaters. The disgusting eating noises, her stuffing her maw to the point of she puts so much food in her mouth that she can barely swallow it all. Like, why go through that? No, there's really no need. So we're just going to stick to the Twitter stuff today. And, and I'm going to get my thoughts on it all. Okay. So like this video should not be very long at all. Uh, you're going to see little clips from the mukbang on the Twitters, but it's going to be very brief. So let's get started. Okay. So let me just go ahead. I'm going to make sure that I am where I need to be with this whole thing. Okay. Perfect. Just lining it up, lining it up. Okay, so for those of you that are on Twitter X and you want to follow me on Twitter X, it's Wild Girl Sarah. So let's start here with a tweet from Scorpio Angel. Scorpio Angel says, hey, Chantal, my boyfriend is an EMT. He told me it took three ambulances and six EMTs to list, lift a 500 pound plus patient off a floor. Two threw out their backs. He said they'll need to put a hole in the wall to get you out if you get any bigger. You'll get a bariatric cot. Have fun with that. So that's something that I've talked about in my reacts before, my previous reacts. I have made mention of that. Like I actually spoke to somebody else on YouTube who is an EMT. Uh, how do they handle somebody who is extremely big? Like, how do they manage to safely put a patient on a stretcher or a cot or something without the EMTs themselves uh, themselves getting hurt? I also found out through research, and I showed you guys the information, that Kuwait, as far as sending out an ambulance, that is not something they do on the regular. It's not something common. So Chantal somebody of her size, if something happened to her at home, they wouldn't automatically send out an ambulance. That's something they do in the most dire of emergencies. And even if they did send out an ambulance, it's going to take more than the average amount of EMTs to put her on a stretcher. It's going to be a whole doggone process. And if there's something life-threatening going on, like say a heart attack or a stroke, every second counts. The longer it takes for uh, those who are trying to assist you to get you to the hospital or a medical facility, the greater the chance of you losing your life. So there's Chantal over in Kuwait where ambulances are not sent out automatically. They're only sent out in the most dire of emergencies. She's out of weight that it would take more than a few EMTs to help her and they would have to be very, very careful putting her on a stretcher or a cot or what have you. It would just, it, it just, she's not helping herself with preserving her life. But I do believe you, Scorpio Angel, that as far as the EMT situation, you know, any normal person, there's only so much weight that they can deal with, you know, because, you know, you're, you're bending over trying to help somebody. 
and that puts a strain on your lower back. You don't want to hurt yourself and you certainly don't want to hurt the patient. So it's like you've got to be careful. So just something to think about, Chantal, that you're at a weight that it would take more than three or four people to put you on a cot or a stretcher. And even if they got you went into an ambulance and got you to the hospital, again, it's going to take another four, five, six people to safely lift you and put you on a stretcher and then put you on a hospital bed. And every second counts and every bit of health counts. The worse your health, the, the less the doctors can do for you. If you have an enlarged heart, if you have an extreme fatty liver, if you have out of control blood sugar and blood pressure, out of control diabetes, you've got so many health problems, all of your major organs are messed up. What can the doctors do for you? Or are you operating with the feeling of, I know that my health is screwed and I know it would take a lot of work to fix myself. So I'm just giving completely up. And I'm just going to, in essence, eat myself to death because I don't care. I'm going to say something that's going to sound really morbid and really rude, but it's not coming from a place of hate. It's just my thoughts. Something that I've been feeling for a while and something that I've been thinking for a while. So let's go all the way back to when Chantal was with Natter. Like the, that whole thing with Natter, I just had a feeling that right before the Natter arc started up, that Chantal, something in her snapped, something shifted, a, a switch was flipped. Maybe she got some bad news or something. And that's what led to all the crazy feral behavior with Natter. Like something happened. And she's like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. You only live once. I'm going to just live my life and do everything that I want and put my foot on the gas pedal. So she just went wild doing all the chemicals, doing all the food, hanging out with Natter. It just, it had the feeling of somebody who was just something had happened. Something was said, something was experienced. And they decided to just let completely go of the steering wheel. She just decided to let go. Like, I don't know if something did happen. That was just the feeling that I got. And then moving on to Mr. Salah, I'm going to be honest with y'all. The feeling that I got with her going after Salah and moving over to Kuwait to be with him, it felt like end of life stuff. It really did. She gave up her cats. She gave up her roommate. She gave up the villa. The feeling that I got was she, before her time is over, she wanted to experience what it was like to be married, to have a partner. She really, really wanted that before the end. So she reached out to Salah. They came to some sort of agreement and he agreed to play a part on camera. She, she wanted that husband-wife experience before something happened to her. Because I think even she knows that her life, she's not going to be here till old age. Given the path that she's on. She pulled up all of her roots in Canada and she moved over to Kuwait. Did she do that as a way to escape her financial responsibilities in Canada, yes, that's true. But just the feeling that I got from it all was somebody who's like, before I go, I want to experience this. I want to know what it's like or get the closest possible version of it before I go. So that that's just that's just the feeling that I got. Maybe I'm in completely incorrect. But back when she was with Natter, for some reason, a switch was flipped and she just got obsessed with having a partner. What put her on that kick? I do not know. And I cannot say, but she would just got man obsessed. 
Like she just, it, it was an all important quest to her to find a man and be with a man. I don't know why. I don't know like what got her deadlocked on that. So she was obsessed with finding a man, being with a man with Natter. Then she moved on with Salah. They came up with some sort of an agreement and she won't let him go. She will not let Salah go. The recent trip that they took out to the tower, uh, people have said that there are immigration offices in that tower. Uh, I think Chantal knows that her trip to Kuwait will be the last one, given everything happening in Kuwait. Hence the reason why after two years, they're going to the immigration offices because she wants to take Salah with her. Like before, she didn't want him in Canada. She wanted to keep him out of Canada because in Canada, he would have a lot more freedom and therefore there would be a greater chance that he would run off and do his thing, which is what all of us in girl world are thinking. That he wants to get to Canada and do his own thing and use Chantal as a bridge to get there. But Chantal, knowing that might be a possibility and her being jealous and insecure, she doesn't want him to have that freedom. So she's been very content to leave him in Kuwait, you know, as a safeguard. That way she can go back and then come back to him as she pleases. But to keep him away from the freedom of, in Canada, keep him away from the ladies, you know, why now after two years when they could have done this earlier, is it so important? Because, because she's got a feeling that she can't go back. Once she leaves, she can't go back. The policies are changing. They're really cracking down on people. So if she knows that she cannot go back there or there's a great possibility they will not allow her back, she might be trying to take him with her. Although I've got questions because if you're trying to be somebody's sponsor, there's a few things they do look for. They look for your income, of course, to see if you have enough money to support yourself and the other person they want to see stable financial income. But another thing that they might be looking for is, do you have a home? They want to know where you're living. Do you have a stable home? If Chantal is trying to take Salah back to Canada, she doesn't have a stable home there. She doesn't have a base of operation. She did at the villa, but she gave that up. A uh, little personal information about me. I My second marriage, I was married to a man who was from Mexico City. So he had to go through the process of uh, getting a green card. And they do look at those things. They look at your income. They look at uh, where you live. If you're saying you're married to somebody, they want to talk to the both of you. They want to ask questions to see, is this a scam marriage or is it a real one? They want to see proof of a real marriage. There's like a whole thing you have to go through. So I don't know what Salah would have to go through with immigration, but I do know that I'm absolutely certain that they will ask, where are you going to live? And since Chantal doesn't have a home, they're going to fail that part of the questionnaire, aren't they? Of course. So moving on through Twitter, Sarah Abbey says, Foodie Beauty is that really a dumb person who takes her meds to keep gorging herself. She now knows she can eat whatever she wants if she takes the diabetes meds. Not getting the meds will keep getting increased to keep up until she's maxed out. Truly dumb. She's eating herself to death. Well, I have noticed that Chantal agreed with Sarah Abbey that she is using the medication not to heal herself, not to manage her diabetes, but to give herself more wiggle room to have more B moments. She's not stopping the B moments. She's not trying to find ways to stop the B moments. She's trying to find sneaky ways to continue. She knows her blood sugar is a problem. She knows that carbs and sugar push it all the way up there to ridiculous levels. So the meds became important 
when the blood sugar levels got dangerously high, suddenly she's gravitating towards her medication. So she'll take the medication, chase the blood sugar down just enough to where she can have another B moment. And then when the blood sugar spikes, let's take some more medication to chase it back down. And she's done this with her medication and she's done it with hospital visits. She even abuses the medical system by going out, going to say Chinese buffet places. She'll go wild and then go to the hospital afterwards, uh, getting insulin, getting fluids. And then she doesn't learn a lesson. She goes right back out and she eats a bunch of junk food. So looking for ways to continue her bad habits versus finding ways of stopping them. You know, like foodie is too far gone. Do you guys understand me? She's too far gone. And there's so much wrong there. Like she's so wrapped in ego that even though there's so many people giving her advice and saying, hey, you should stop. You should go to inpatient. You should go to therapy. She's not looking at that as constructive criticism or that those are people who are saying that, that they are saying it and it's true that she needs to go to inpatient. She needs to get therapy. Any criticism, no matter how truthful it is, she looks at that as it's coming from a place of hate. Why? Because she's an addict and she's not ready to give up her addiction. The addiction demon is on top of her. It is mastering her. It is controlling her thoughts. It's telling her what to do. It's telling her what to think. It's telling her how to act. And all the addiction demon says to her is, you need to feed me and you need to pay attention to me and nothing else beyond me matters. And it's got her. It's got her bad. Chantal wanted to be married to Salah, but she's been married for years to her addictions and she's been faithful to every single one of them. She's not once tried to truly divorce herself away from them. Hence the reason why she needs inpatient and therapy. But even if somebody like Chantal, if they had doctor now in front of them willing to work for free, it still wouldn't work. Because spiritually, mentally, emotionally, she's not at the place where she's willing to listen. She's in denial. Absolutely in denial. But I agree with you, Sarah. She is abusing her diabetic medication. She's not taking her diabetes seriously. She's just taking whatever medication she can to chase the blood sugar back down to where she doesn't go into a diabetic coma. And she thinks as long as she does that, she's fine. <laughs> Chantal, you've got more than just the blood sugar as a problem. You've got high blood pressure. You've got the extreme fatty liver. You've got problems with your heart. You've got problems with your breathing. You've got problems with your mobility. Just zeroing in on one issue doesn't cancel out all the other issues like that plate is not just full but overflowing but you think if you just tackle one speck it makes it all better it doesn't and by the way ma'am something to consider you like to eat at night you like to eat before bed you love to eat your carbs you can eat a bunch of carbs but just because you go to sleep doesn't mean your blood sugar won't dangerously spike while you're asleep, you could have a medical event in your sleep. I don't know if that's what you're going for. I don't know if that's the intention, but just something to be aware of that just because you go to sleep doesn't mean your blood sugar is not going to get dangerously high. Just something to think about. <coughs> Excuse me. Foop Olympics says the top two comments on our video. LMAO, every other positive comment praising her, only have three likes. So Mish Drew says, didn't you just go on a rant about getting healthy and having no more excuses? 
Sherry says, what happened to no longer doing mukbangs, girl? All of you beezers, listen. All of you beezers, this is what she does. This is who she is. Chantal does not change. Her behaviors do not change. Her lies do not change. Her stories do not change. How do you think the reaction channels are able to predict what she's going to do? Because she is unchanging. Her patterns of behavior, her thinking stay exactly the same. She's not unpredictable. She's very predictable. If you want proof of that, please check out the Chantal cycle. Just go online and Google a picture called the Chantal cycle. That was made back in 2018, and it's still relevant today. And that was six years ago. She still follows the Chantal cycle. Somebody came up with that meme, and it's still relevant today, to this day. She gets mad at girl world. You want to know why? Because a lot of us have been around for years, watching her for years. We are familiar with her patterns. And she hates that. She hates the fact that we remember stuff about her. We remember things she said. We remember things she's done. And we will bring it up. A lot of us have archives of things she's done. We have the video clips. We have the live streams that she's deleted off her channel. She hates the fact that there are living versions of Foodie Beauty Wikipedia running around on YouTube. That if she tries to say something and lie about it, we can go, oh yeah, well, I remember this. She hates that. She hates the fact that there are a lot of foodie beauty OG reactors that have been around a long time. And we can put her lies to rest. And you would think that Chantal would learn her lesson with the Beezers. She had an older crop of Beezers, OG Beezers. They're all gone now. Now you got a new crop of Beezers. They've not been around for years. They don't know all the lore. They don't know about all the incidents and and the shocking topics and drama and her flashing herself. You would think that she would want to start over with those people, do different things, have different habits, turn over a new leaf. No, not Chantal doing the same stuff and getting the same reaction from her audience members. She's just not getting it that she is ruining herself. It's not girl world ruining her. It's her ruining herself. Life has tried so hard to give her so many chances and she's blown every single one of them. And she's desperately wanting to point her finger at somebody and she can't. Because she is the captain of her own ship and nobody told her to steer it into the rocks and crash it. She chose to do that. She continues to choose to do that. Like the video today, the Wendy's mukbang. Chantal likes to play that wasn't me. I didn't know any better game, but she can't play that game because she's not ignorant. It's not that she's lacking in knowledge. She has the knowledge. She just doesn't want to listen to people and do what she needs to do. And that is her choice. It's her body. It's her life. She can do what she wants. But she doesn't even have the respect to take this fetish content and take it off of YouTube and put it where it needs to be, like OnlyHands or Patreon. That way, those people who want to see it, who are willing to pay for it, they can watch it there. And just ordinary people on YouTube that are not interested in the fetish content just ordinary walking around people, they don't have to be exposed to it. The people that are on YouTube that have maybe say an ED of their own, they won't be triggered by it. 
Chantal's content, it's could be potentially triggering or bad for those who have EDs. Might cause them to relapse and have a B moment of their own. That's why it's bad. It's bad for Chantal, but it's also bad for other people. And clearly with this mukbang today, she's seriously catering to the feedy people. She is putting out the bat signal to all of them to come see her, to give her travel money, to pay for her meals. I don't know what her intention is, but those of you that are Beezers, do you get it now? Do you see it? It's right there in front of you. It's right there in your face. Do you see who she's catering to? Do you see what she's doing to herself? My next question. Do you want to be subscribed to somebody that is purposely, willingly, eagerly unaliving themselves on their channel? Because that's what's happening here. And again, I don't say that from a hateful place. I'm just asking a question. Do you want to see somebody little by little by little unalive themselves? She gets on YouTube. She does self-harm content. Yes, that's exactly what it is. She's got an issue with food. It's hurting her. It's making her sick. It continues to make her sick. Her health is getting worse. What else can you call it? She gets on YouTube. She does self-harm content. Purposely making herself ill. She is a food addict. And when she does the mukbang videos, what you're watching, ladies and gentlemen, is somebody getting their fix in front of you. It may not be in pill form. It may not be in needle form. It may not be in the form of something you smoke, but it's still her getting her fix from her rug of choice. It doesn't matter if it's an illegal substance or a legal substance. It's how she gets high. Do you understand me? Food can be just as dangerous as any legal or illegal substance. It's doing damage to her body. And she wants everybody to watch her damage herself. Chantal thought she was so clever long ago. Getting on YouTube and having a problem with food. And oh, I'm going to make everybody else pay for it. I'm going to get everybody else to fund my bad habits. And she did. She turned her channel into nothing but that. Looking for enablers. Looking for funders to her habit. And the more funders and enablers she found, the greater her habit grew. The last time I heard from Chantal, she was spending at least four to $6,000 a month on food. That's insane. That's how bad the habit has gotten. Really bad. And it's only going to get worse. And her behavior is only going to get worse. And she's going to be, do nothing but get on camera and hurt herself. And then later on, turn her sickness into content and complain about it and get people concerned. And then once people are concerned and she's tired of talking about it, you're going to go back to the food. And then when people say, what are you doing? She's going to get mad at those people and block them. This is the Chantal cycle. This is the gaslighting. I want to monetize my problem and then monetize the, the sickness that I caused for my problem. And all the audience members are supposed to do is sit there, shut up and give me their money. So audience members that watch Chantal that are on her channel supporting her. What do you think about that? How do you feel about that? Do you want to get sucked dry of positive energy watching this woman? It's your choice. You're on YouTube. You can go where you want to go. I'm just letting you know there's going to be no positive rays of sunshine with this one. She is on a dark path. 
And worse, she wants everyone to watch literally her demise. She wants the sympathy for what she's choosing to do to herself. She wants your money to contribute to what she does to herself. Do you want to watch that? I will leave it up to you. I know that some of you care about Chantal on her channel, but understand she doesn't care for herself. She has a choice to turn this thing around. She's choosing not to. She may act like she wants to turn it around, but she really, really doesn't. So now that you know that, now that you know, now you as people, you have a, you have a choice that you want to watch somebody hurting themselves and driving themselves to a unfortunate end or not. Maybe some of you think you can save Chantal. No, in this fairy tale, the princess has to save herself. If anybody can save her, it's her. If she chooses not to, that's her decision. She's not a damsel in distress tied to the railroad tracks. She is a 40 year old woman who knows exactly what she's doing, who is willingly doing it to herself and looking for people to help her hurt herself and there's nothing any of us can do about it. Before any of you can care, she's got to care. So just be aware of that. Okay, moving on. So Julie says, okay, so white rice, potatoes, and white bread. Yes, definitely taking your health seriously. Also, why are your eyes closed? Are you trying to show how orgasmic your food is? So here, here are the newest thumbnails that she created for the mukbangs. Is there absolutely any doubt who these newest videos are for? This is for the Feedy people. This is who she's targeting. This is who she wants on her channel. It's not about 100% of audience of different kinds of people. It's aimed at one specific group. Because this is what they get into. When you're having an emotional response to your food, you're really into it. You're really consumed with it. This is what they look for. She's sending out the bat signal to those people. She's showing off the food. The food is right there in front. The closed eyes, this is for them. So now that you guys can see this, what's the next phase going to be? Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I went too far and I did too much and now I'm sick. It, when that happens, not if, but when, no one give her any sympathy. She's constantly the little girl who cried wolf. She wants to monetize her issue she wants to monetize the symptoms and the sickness that she that she herself brings on by monetizing her issue. It, it's a wild cycle. No one should feel sympathy for this woman. She is literally hurting herself. And she wants people to feel sorry for her, for her hurting herself. Listen, if somebody walks up to a stove and they put their hand on the stove and they burn themselves, and then they go, ow, that hurt. The first and second time they do that, you might go, oh, I'm sorry. You burned your hand. The third, fourth, and fifth time, those same people are going to go, why are you touching the stove? You know better. You know it's hot. Why are you continuing to touch it? We should have that same attitude with Chantal, that same energy. Like, you know what you're doing to yourself. You know this is bad for you. So why are you expecting sympathy from us? You're not a four-year-old. You're a 40-year-old. You know what to do. You've got the resources to change this thing. So why aren't you? Don't come crying to us when you make yourself sick. 
because that's the key word. You made yourself sick. Nobody made you sick. Girl world didn't do it. Why are you crying to us for when you purposely did it to yourself? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Moving on to North Star. Uh, North Star says, ha ha foodie, keep enjoying the food. When your Salah rushes you to the hospital because, well, pay pig down. He won't need to explain anything. He's got your mukbang videos to show the cause. Yeah, if, listen, if something happens to Chantal, <laughs> Salah's off the hook. He can just show the videos and go, look, this person's got an obsession with food. And this is what she does. And that's why she's in the hospital, not because of anything I did to her. He's got the perfect alibi. He's not, he doesn't have to do anything to Chantal. She's hurting herself. He doesn't have to lift a finger. And he, here we go. Uh, Kelly says, I guess she just doesn't give a freak. Even after, in her words, being the sickest she ever was, she is just going to D.I.E., day by day over food. This goes to show you that she has a loveless marriage or she would fight for it. So let's listen to the clip. In bed praying, like praying and praying and praying until I fall asleep. And Yeah, what happened to that, Chantal? What happened to no more mukbangs? What happened to, I'm not doing the mukbang thing anymore. If I do the mukbang thing. I'm a big idiot, blah, blah, blah. We all knew that was lip service. We all knew. I knew. I know how extreme your food issue is. And the only thing that's going to work is you flying your butt home to Canada. And as soon as you get off the plane, you go straight into an inpatient facility that is locked down. Your phone is taken away from you. You have no access to outside food and you have to listen to people inside the facility and they will tell you no. You cannot be given any kind of room right now to have your way because it, you, they give you any kind of freedom. You're going to mess this up. I'm not going to take you seriously with saying, I want to change my life and I want to get over this food thing until that happens, because that is the only thing that will work. If somebody puts you in a house or an apartment and they give you a phone and you're going to order food or you have somebody like pizza Salah around, you're going to keep indulging. You need to be in an environment that is restricted where you do not have any outside power or influence over the people that are around you. People that you cannot control or threaten or blackmail or throw a temper tantrum and they'll give in. You need to be a very restricted, controlled environment of which you have no power over. If you were serious about your health and you flew home to Canada and you went straight into inpatient, I would say, Maybe things are different this time. Maybe she's serious. She's taking this seriously. And I would applaud you for taking it seriously because things are at a critical point. But you keep mucking about and lying to yourself. You're not searching for the truth. You're searching for a truth that you make up, that you try to make true. And you don't know what you're doing. You're out of control. You know you are. You know you're out of control. You don't know what you're doing, Chantal. And that's why you need to give over control to other people and say, I don't know what I'm doing. I've lost control of this vehicle. Somebody please drive for me. I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to crash into a wall if somebody doesn't take the driver's seat. It's okay to say, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I need help. It's okay to reach out for help. But you don't want to admit that anything's wrong. You're too busy wearing that ego mask. And it's literally killing you. Being in the ego tower is killing you. You're so obsessed with being better 
or having more money than everybody in girl world, at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Your problem is that once upon a time, you were once Chantal. But then you made a character on YouTube called Foodie Beauty. And the character Foodie Beauty had things that the person does not have. A successful channel, lots of money, people wanting to talk to you at any hour of the day or night you want to go live. You looked at that as your ideal life. And so you forgot about the person's side of you. And you dove headfirst into the character. Now you want to stay in that character 24-7. You can't do that. Even the most professional actor and actress, when they play a part, they play the part. And then once the cameras are turned off, they go back to the dressing room. They put their clothes on. They take the makeup off. And then they go take a walk. They shift back to being a person. You don't want to do that, though, because you don't like yourself. You don't like the life off camera that you have so that's therefore you want to hide in your character and that's what's made everything go imbalanced but the character is just a character Chantal you're not taking care of the person and if you don't take care of things the character and the person won't be here much longer You understand? They're not going to be. <sighs> Mrs. Flupa Booty says, I keep flip-flopping on conspiracy theories. If she's traveling, gorging herself on back-to-back -back salty mukbangs for filler videos to use while visa hopping seems stupid. It's going to make travel worse for her. Is she aiming to make herself too big to leave? You know, there's so many directions you can go with with this thing. With what's going on with her. I know that Chantal. She likes to mess around with girl world. And she. She normally has a queue. Of videos that she keeps. Stocked away. That if she's traveling. Or if something's going on. And she doesn't want us to know. She keeps like a stockpile. Of videos. And she will post them. Out of time and out of context. So that we can't follow the timeline. She knows that people are very detailed here. It could be that maybe perhaps she is hoping that she gets too sick and too big and she thinks they can't kick her out of Kuwait based on that. Chantal, if they want to get you out of there, they're going to get you out of there. If they got to put you on a boat versus a plane, that's exactly what they'll do. When you got to go, you got to go. Do you understand that you got to go? You cannot squat in a country where you are not a resident or a citizen. Like, I, I don't know what your master plan is to hold on to Salah or to stay in Kuwait, but you are essentially squatting in a country that is not your own. And again, if the plan is, I'm going to get myself so sick and so big, they can't kick me out and I could spend more time with Salah, you need to scrap that. You really need to scrap that. If it takes them putting you on a, a private plane or a boat, whatever it takes, they're going to make it happen. You will not be allowed to stay. And if you overstay, you'll get kicked out and they'll stamp your passport and you cannot go back. But I, I, the feeling that I'm getting right now is that I think you know because of all the policy changes that once you leave, you can't go back. Hence the reason after two years there's an emphasis on trying to see if Salah can come with you although I don't think he'll be able to come with you 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 held off him coming to Canada for as long as you could but now that you know you cannot go back or there's a possibility you will not be allowed back you're like let's see if I can bring him with me I don't know why you'd want to bring him with you in the first place I mean, he's been disastrous for your channel, but you do you. You know, like just, he's the, been the ruination of your channel, Chantal, and you're insisting on bringing the ruin home to Canada. Okay. Uh, Langello says, two weeks ago, she was lying in bed, praying to Allah. 
begging for another chance. Yeah, so much for uh, asking anything from Allah. You know, there's the spiritual world, and then there's the physical world. And, and no, prayer is not a bad thing at all. <coughs> if you're someone and you pray, and you're tapping into your spiritual side, I think that's fantastic. But we as human beings, we have to help ourselves too. We can't rely just on the spiritual world to help us. Maybe it can help us in certain ways, but in other ways, the spiritual world looks at us and says, human, you have to help yourself. You know, you got to put some action behind the words and you've got to have good intentions. And, and if she thinks she can do whatever she wants and hurt herself and all is going to step forward and make it all better. That's not how it works. Okay. A little palate cleanser from nature is amazing. Y'all look at the size of that catfish. Yes, catfish can grow that big. They they suck up anything. And you put them in a big enough pond, they can grow that big. That's nuts. Aw, from Punch Cat, look. Finally, cat distribution system selected me. Yay. <laughs> it keeps selecting me. I don't know why. Like, I have Booger. She was a stray that got brought to my door and I kept her. And then when I moved here, here comes Blackie. It keeps selecting me. I, <laughs> but I'm glad it selected you, sir. Enjoy. Look at the little one. And the little one adores you. Look. Look at, the, look at that face. Look at that little face. Look at the face. You got a little buddy for life. Look at that. Aw. Okay. Back to Chantal. Perfectly Imperfect says the most insane thing about Foodie's latest video is that she ate all that in less than 10 minutes. So what was on the menu today? We had not one, but two burgers, chicken nuggets, chili cheese fries, and a soda. Listen, y'all. Just one of the burgers would have filled me up for hours. I mean, those things are filling. The most I can do as far as fast food is a burger and fries, and that's it. We are not eating multiple items. And she's over there eating not one, but two burgers, whole bunch of chicken nuggets, chili cheese fries, and she did all of that in less than 10 minutes. Wow. Just how? Why? Why were you eating so fast? Crazy. Uh, Wonder Mom says, Foodie Beauty will lose her few beezers that care for her doing this. She is not giving them what they want. No fake care, no information, no attention. Sitting on camera, shoving in fat, salt, sugar, bringing her nearer to the grave with each bite. Can't wait for her next upload. Well, she's basically saying without saying, look, beezers, if you're not a feedie, I don't care about you. I don't care about your care or your concern, I care about those who will give me the extra cash via Instagram and PayPal. Those are the people that I'm really here for. The rest of you can just go have a coffee. I don't care about you. Any care or concern expressed to Foodie, honestly, it's wasted. She's not going to soak that in and go, you know, maybe I should think about this. Maybe I should think about the pe things that people are saying and they really care about me. And maybe I should care about myself more. She doesn't work like that. She's very much in that narrow way of thinking of self-gratification and, and catering to her addictions. And that's all that matters right now. She's consumed with her addictions. Uh, Foop Olympic says she just had a B moment with her comfort foods and she still looks and sounds miserable at the end of it. This, this is getting bleak. Let's watch the clip. That's it for this video. That's my lunch. I ate that pretty fast because I was like so hungry and it was really good. Can I just say this about what she just said? Theory. Okay, uh, just a theory, just a thought, and I've said this before. I feel the reason why Chantal eats so fast, shoving it in so fast, 
uh, coating everything in sauces and eating nothing but mostly soft foods, she's being defiant to her own body. Any normal person, when we eat, when you start eating, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for your stomach and your brain to catch up with each other and you get that full feeling. What she is trying to do, in my opinion, is beat the clock before she gets that full feeling. So she's just shoveling it in, shoveling it in, shoveling it in. She's trying to do that before she gets that full feeling. In essence, she's telling her own body, you're not going to tell me what to do and you're not going to stop me from eating. Also, if she's gone without her fast food for a while, all that does is, uh, all that does is make you want to eat more when you finally do eat it. It just, the bee monster is like, come on, let's go. We haven't had Wendy's in a while or burgers in a while. And, and let's do this. It just supercharges you to go wild. And so she did. It's been a while since she's had the, the fast food stuff. So it's like being fiending for something for a while. And when you finally get it, you go nuts. Okay. One moment, please. Okay. Okay, let's continue. What else we got here? So something interesting that happened with Chantal. Apparently, Chantal's TikTok, her TikTok account, she took a lot of videos out of her and Salah. Like, Salah is gone. So Bunny Angel says, so she's taken Salah out of her TikTok. This is for immigration purposes. She did the same thing because with YouTube last visa run, she's trying to fool them into thinking she's alone. Hopefully one day Kuwait uh, will catch on to her because and the legal string she's pulling. Yeah, I remember way back in the day, Chantal talking about uh, loopholes, exploiting loopholes. <laughs> you know, Chantal, the more you do, the more you tell on yourself. You're supposed to be married to Salah. But if you are really married in any kind of legal capacity to Salah, there would be no need to hide him off your TikTok. You know, maybe you're trying to avoid trouble by, if you are alone and you're unmarried, by telling a lie about being married and get, getting caught up in the lie. But if you were really married, why are you taking him off your TikTok, girl? I mean, come on. You're, very, you're so transparent. Uh, a chick and a duck. The Chantal 2024. Let's watch the clip. You guys have to tell me I'm a stupid effing idiot if I ever eat any of that shit again. You're a stupid idiot. Hey, you told us to say it. I'm just following your instructions, Chantal. You are a stupid idiot. You've been a stupid idiot for a while. Because you know what you need to do and you refuse to do it. You've got all the time, energy, money, resources, access to help. There is no reason under God beyond the fact that you're choosing to do what you do for you to do what you do. You cannot throw up your hands and say, well, I have no other choice. There's no one that can help me. There's plenty of things that can help you. The thing is, you just don't want help. You're not ready for help. You want to stay wrapped up in the embrace of your addiction. You're consumed by it. And you don't want to change that. And again, that is up to you. But can I just say, ma'am, I think it is very, very cruel and unkind and disrespectful that you get on YouTube with you doing the content that you do and you're fully aware of the fact that there are so many people online, they have problems with food. They have food addictions. They have addictions, period. And maybe they're trying to get on the other side of them. And then there's you, that you decided to give 
your issues a job. Okay, where was I? Uh, I just had a bit of a phone call, so we are back now. So yes, where were we? We were on Chantal being a complete idiot and telling people to call her an idiot if she did mukbangs again. Well, Chantal, you are an idiot. <laughs> you're, you're not just an idiot, you're a fool because you don't have to be a fool. And you know you don't have to be a fool, but you're too hyper-focused on getting your addictions fed and catering to people that want you to feed them for their benefit and for their enjoyment. So you're making these choices, Chantal. You're really making these choices, and it's it's all up to you. Okay, where are we? Uh, D. Angry Scott says, 11 days ago, Foodie tempted fate by literally daring her cravings to come back, claiming she would tell them where to go. Today, she has returned to believing that carbs are indeed worth dying for. Almost D-E-A-D and can't stick to a diet for two weeks love that for you so thank you for including the clip let's watch so i've been eating like a lot of like beans for like breakfast and stuff like that if i eat breakfast and by the way y'all beans are actually carbs so it would seem that chantal she's going where the carbs are you know, instead of going for the where the wild things are, let's go where the carbs are. Let's let's eat the rice, the pasta, the beans. Like just too much of anything is bad for you. Just because it's beans versus a noodle or a, or a piece of bread doesn't make it any better. Um, otherwise, I usually just have like one main meal where it's like I'll have like a lot of salad, a little bit of chicken. And you know, and just to give you guys some insight if you're someone and you have a problem with food like you'll find all kinds of little catty corners and shortcuts and justifications and you'll justify having a b moment by saying to yourself oh well i didn't eat anything for breakfast and i didn't eat anything for lunch so that means i can go hog wild during dinner and have a whole entire spread of food no, you can't. But in a messed up brain, you'll justify it as since I went without food for X amount of hours, that means I can double up or triple up in one meal. And you just can't do that, Chantal. A bad meal is a bad meal. Carbs are carbs. Having a B moment is a B moment. And some rice. I, I've been eating rice every single day not maybe like a quarter of what I would normally And by the eat. way, Chantal, I know you like to do things for drama. I like I know you like to do things for attention. And you like to do things out of spite. Just straight up spite. But understand this, the things that you do as far as your health, as far as the eating, you're not hurting anyone but you. If you're eating all of this food, if you're doing the mukbangs now to spite girl world, to make us angry, to have us be all up in arms and create outrage, it's not working. And if you want to know why, it's because we just don't care anymore. We understand there's nothing we can do for you. We understand that nothing that we say you listen to. So in life, when you meet people that they're hurting themselves or they're engaging in hurtful behavior and they're not in a frame of mind, where they're going to listen to you, you just stop talking. You just stop caring. And you have pushed everybody to that point. The reactors, the reaction audience, your own audience, everybody, they're pulling away from you because they realize you are a lost cause, that you want to hear what you want to hear and everything else you'll block out or you'll get angry over. So everybody is just kind of, divorcing themselves away from the situation and you and saying there's nothing to be done here so i'm out maybe even less than that and that's been i find that's been satisfying and feeling so and that's a problem with you chantal you go for volume and bulk you're all about not just 
filling up your stomach, but overfilling it. And I'm not your doctor. I'm just taking a guess here based my, on my own experience with food. To you, being over full is full. And when you stuff yourself with food, while you're stuffed, it, it could be an escape. It could be a distraction from negative emotion or thinking about things. And so you're taking comfort in that distraction. You're using that as a form of escape. And so you're always striving to be over full at all times, even though that being over full is not helping you at all. Girl, as far as the overstuffing thing, I can relate because I did it. I can conf confess to that. I did it. I purposely kept the tank topped off because as long as I was over full, I, it distracted me emotionally from thinking about things and being upset. And I feel that you're doing the same thing. You've been doing the same thing. That the more hectic and chaotic and upsetting and anxious you feel, the more you're going to eat. So there could be that. Plus you're catering to the feeding people. You're using your own stomach and the food that you put in it as a distraction point. And that is not healthy. Because that unhealthy food is doing you no favors. Catering to the feedy people is doing you no favors. You know this. It's been pointed out to you. You don't want to listen. There's nothing that anybody can do. But you're going to go for the carbs. You're going to go for the pasta. You're going to go for the rice. You're going to go for the bread. Why? Because that stuff stays in your stomach longer versus say fruit or vegetables that it goes in the stomach and it gets digested faster. You're going for the fullness feeling because the fullness, it distracts you from thinking about things, from feeling things. You're using your own stomach as an escape room. Here's the problem. It may feel like an escape, but it's not. When you have an addiction to something, you know, you start off in your own like little room. When you have an addiction to something, it's like creating a room that is connected to the first room. And if you're in the first room and you're feeling a certain kind of way and you're doing something to distract yourself, all you're doing is walking into that second room for a while and then walking right back to the first room. But you're not getting out of either one of those rooms. You're not really truly escaping. You're just creating another false space where you think you're happy, where you think that there's some kind of peace when there's not. It's just a distraction that is not solving the problem. It's not solving the issues that are making you feel a certain kind of way. That's why the addiction has to be handled the right way. You have to find the coping skills and the coping mechanisms and you have to reach out to people and admit you've got issues and you've got problems that need to be solved. And yet you need outside perspective that you are on the inside looking out. They're on the outside looking in. They can give you those points of view. You can learn and you can become better, but you're not interested in those things because you're too engrossed in, uh, engrossed in YouTube. You feel everything, your problem with food, the sickness that comes from the problem with food, anything about you is content. You are concerned with content and keep, keeping people watching you and maintaining this false sense of, I am better than all of you. I am living better than all of you. I have a relationship where most of you may not have a relationship. I'm making more money. I've got more viewers. I've got more subscribers. You've built this false tower of superiority that makes no sense because you're not superior. I do believe you are human. You know, you're flesh and blood, you're bone, you are muscle, you are tissue. As much as you want to deny it, you are mortal. And you are subject to things that happen to mortals. You are not some demigod. You are not a goddess. Uh, if you hurt yourself, you're going to suffer the consequences. If you hurt other people, you're going to suffer the consequences. So trying to put yourself over others is not working. Trying to remove yourself 
from the human race and put yourself above it is not working. It absolutely is not. What a shame. What a shame of a life that you have that you were given a cup of fortune and you turned it into a bowl of poison. Life tried to help you out and give you something to work with, but you worked with it in the wrong way. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens when the the cravings come back. But I have like this like rage inside of me for like, I dare it to come back. You know what, Chantal, <laughs> like, you are on a I railroad track to failure. And as long as you stay on that railroad track, you are going to fail. If you have no coping skills or mechanisms, if you're not going to inpatient, you're not going to therapy to figure out, say, emotional issues, mental issues, talk about past things that might have happened in your life that caused you to want to eat the way that you do. If you're not doing different kinds of content on your YouTube channel, if the focus is on food and catering to those that want you to eat, you're set up for failure. You've set yourself up for failure. How are you going to succeed if you keep indulging in something with no coping skills and no coping mechanisms and you are surrounding yourself with people that are enabling you and funding you in your habit? That There's no chance of success there. But honestly, I don't think you want to be successful with getting away from food. I think you're scared to death of finding something that is not food you're scared because food is literally your identity it's part of your name foodie beauty if you had to do content that was not food what would you do i don't think you know it i don't think you want to find out you know that there's nothing in you that you can showcase to take the place of food and so you stick with the old familiar even though the old familiar is bad for you you just won't get away from it. You're scared of having a channel where you're not catering to the feedy people. You're scared of not catering to them and losing money. I know that Hungry Fat Chick, she really did make an honest, true attempt to change things around. But she said that because the money wasn't so good, she went back to the mukbangs. And that makes me sad for Candy because unlike you, she seems like a really nice person. But it's sad that that happened. But she really did try. But you, your channel isn't even isn't even half the size of Candy's. Just like her, you could go a different way. You're not. You're both making that choice, and it's just so unfortunate that you you created that hole for yourself, that trap. And you're not saying to yourself, you know what? Enough is enough and I'm going to get myself out of it. Ugh. I dare it to come back and ask me, like, ask me to eat. Well, you dared it to come back. Your addiction said, am I a joke to you? And you said, no, I'll keep indulging you. Now it's saying, so I guess you've chosen death. I guess it's time to ring up the Grim Reaper. I guess so. Now you, you really want to talk to him, don't you? Eat pot pie, I swear. <laughs> Do it. Ask me. Crave it. Go on cravings. Ask me to eat pot pie and see what happens to you. Well, the cravings didn't tell you to eat pot pie. The cravings told you to eat Wendy's and look what happened. You ate your freaking Wendy's. You're going to get the biggest. And I want to know which one of your feedy people paid for that meal. That was a $50 meal, Chantal. Which one of your feedy people paid for that meal? Which one of them requested it? I believe that was a request. So which one of them requested it? Which one of them paid for it? Because I know you've got a few in your back pocket. You're, you're catering to those people rather than telling them to F off and back off. F you know. <laughs> um, I, I'm not even like the thought of that we'll see i've just been craving more natural food and i think i'm gonna when i do start cooking again i'm gonna be like planning what what kind of things like i think really high volume like vegetable like 
just a huge stock pot of soup that I love because I've been eating. See, she kind of gave herself away. Notice what she just said. High volume food. High volume. She, what did I say? She's all about bulk and volume. So if it's not high bulk and volume in carbs, she's looking for a high bulk and volume in vegetables and fruits, which would not be bad. I mean, the fruits might be bad if it's too, too many sugars there, but looking for the bulk, looking for the volume, her stomach must be stretched all the way out, like twice the size of normal, but she's looking for bulk and volume. And she knows that fruits and vegetables do not stay in the stomach that long, hence why she goes to carbs so much. Plus carbs and sugar, it's it's the fuel that she runs on. It's not nutrients, it's not vitamins, it's not minerals. It's about bulk and volume, bulk and volume, bulk and volume. She doesn't want to do smaller portions because she's going to look at that smaller portion after eating the bigger portions for so long and mentally, emotionally, she might think that's not enough. I'm starving. No, you're not starving. It's just that you've been eating out of control portions for so long, Chantal, that you honestly think that bigger portion is normal when it's abnormal. The smaller portion is really what you should be eating because you're very sedentary and you don't move. And since you don't move, you don't need that much. You don't need that much in the way of calories or carbs. If you're not expending energy, you don't need things put in you that give you a lot of energy, especially in high amounts lentil and vegetable soup every day so i'll just throw a bunch of vegetables and you know what as far as soups and stews that is a very smart thing to do if you're someone you don't like to cook and you want something easy making soups and stews is so smart you can make a whole crock pot full of stew or soup you can put a whole bunch of stuff in it that's healthy and the liquid will add to the volume and make you feel full and make you feel like you've eaten more when you've actually eaten less. It's a really smart thing for anybody who's looking to lose weight or control their weight. Or you just, you don't want to be bothered with messing up a bunch of dishes and pots and pans. I'm telling you, soups and stews. You can make a hot stew or something cold. Uh, you know, so for say summertime when it gets really hot, you can freeze it and it'll stay good for a long time. It's just a really smart choice. But she's not that invested in her health. Lentils. And just blend it. I love it. Um, so, why don't, been, so why don't you do it? You talk about all these healthy options and yet you don't do it, do you? Oh, it's just straight up feedy content. I think Foodie Beauty believes she can pull back the feedy views, but she will swing back into diet cycling at some point. That's why she's not a hungry fat chick. Yeah, she keeps flip-flopping back and forth. And the feedy people, when they're looking for someone to get into, if they don't, if they're too cheap to go on the private platforms and subscribe and do th things that way, they're looking for channels that are consistent, mukbanging, feedy content, not flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. So she'll attract the feedy people to her channel, but not able to keep them because she'll act like she's into her health and start eating that healthy food. And that's a turn off for them. So someone like Hungry Fat Chick, you know, like the guys that are into that, they're going to go to her because it's consistent. The content is consistent. The eating of the fast food is consistent. Okay. So you guys can see what she's eating. Two burgers, chicken nuggets, chili cheese fries. I mean, that's just a crazy amount of food. It's insane. I don't know how you do it, Chantal. Uh, Perfectly Imperfect says she had no intention of ever following through with healthy eating or getting better. Here's the proof. Okay, let's watch. No, I said no more uh, like unhealthy, huge mukbangs. And there is the bee monster of making sense of things that don't make sense. This is her gaslighting people. This is her changing her mind or finding her own narrative to justify what she's doing, making it seem like everybody else is wrong when they're not. First, she said no more mukbangs. Now she's saying, oh, I didn't mean that. I meant no big out of control, unhealthy mukbangs. What in the world do you call the, the Wendy's mukbang? What do you call that? Look, look, look. 
Hold on. Let's take a look at that. Look what's in front of her. Shut up, Chantal. Don't talk. We're going to blow this up. Got two burgers, a bunch of chicken nuggets. I mean, you could have taken out the chicken nuggets or and, and one of the burgers just had the burger and the fries, and that would have been enough for me. I wouldn't have been able to finish all those fries. But she's got three protein items, two burgers, chicken nuggets, as well as the carbs, as well as the soda. That's too much. That is way too much, y'all. So what is this if not an unhealthy mukbang? I don't see one healthy item in front of you, Chantal. It's all junk food. But the bean monster is going to make it make sense in your head. Oh, Chantal, you didn't have four burgers today. You just had two. So that makes it okay. You didn't have 40 chicken nuggets. You just had 10. So it's okay. You didn't have a whole, you know, KFC chicken bucket full of fries. You just had a little bucket. So it's okay. When you have an addiction and the addiction is active and ongoing, it will justify things that do not make sense and are not normal. It will say to you, oh, it's okay to do this and this is the reason why. That's why she needs someone to take control of this thing because she will not acknowledge that this sense, this is all nonsense. But I'm also allowed to change my mind on that. You know what, Chantal? If you want to change your mind, it's okay to change your mind. Here's the problem with you changing your mind. You go to your audience. You tell them all your health problems. You make them aware of your health problems. You make them aware of how sick you are, about your health, your high blood pressure, your diabetes. You show yourself in clinics and hospitals. You invite people in on a personal level, acting as if you're using your audience as a form of accountability. Like, I want you guys to hold me accountable and I want you to say something if I act out of pocket. And then when you make them aware of all this stuff and then you start to backslide by doing stuff you shouldn't do, you get mad at them for bringing it up even though you told them to. So you let people know things that are very personal and you do it on purpose because you want, need content, but you also want sympathy and you want to make money off of it. You choose to expose all of that stuff. And then you turn around and you exploit your bad health and you exploit your addictions and it drives everybody crazy. You know you're an impulsive person, that you flip-flop from one thing to the next. Why not do the sensible thing? And if something is going on and you're not sure about it and you're not sticking with it, just keep your mouth shut. That way nobody gets confused and you don't get any negative backlash. Just if, if just instead of being impulsive and opening your mouth, keep the mouth closed. And that way there will be no expectations from anybody no criticisms from anybody. You're going to do what you're going to do anyway. Just shut up. Stop complaining about your lack of bad health. If you want to get on camera and eat yourself into an early grave, nobody can stop you. But stop putting your business out there the way that you do and getting your audience concerned when you're not going to do anything positive with that concern. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you're not going to, if you're not inviting constructive criticism for positive means, why open the door in the first place? Do you understand what I'm saying? Just, just shut up. Just eat your food and shut up. D Angry Scott says, foodie beauty, what happened if Salah loves me too much to let me eat bad food? Or Salah won't let me buy junk food. Well, she controls the money. How can he say no to her if it's her money and she's making it? How can he stop her? Chantal's a control freak. Of course, she's going to control that. Of course she is. Because if she controls that, nobody can tell her no. 
Nobody can stop her. It's her money. Uh, no one would be buying all this for someone they actually love when that person's body is showing clear signs of multi-system damage being caused by your blood sugar. He don't love her, though. He doesn't. He's never loved her. He's very detached away from Chantal, disassociated, uh, very much in the vein of, I'm looking for the right word here, um, indifference. There's the word I'm looking for, indifference. He's very indifferent to Chantal. If she's here, okay, I guess I'll get a paycheck this week. If she's not, I can just get on my phone and find another victim. I mean, Mark, I mean, girlfriend, I mean, pay pig. You guys would get what I'm saying. It's like if she's there, he's going to take advantage of what he can. And if she's not, he's going to move on to the next person. So he don't give a crap. He doesn't give a crap. He's got options. She doesn't. Hence the reason why she's hanging on to him so hard. Because she knows he's the last one. Given all of her health issues and the way she is, no man is going to sign up with her and put up with her. She, ain't, she doesn't have the money anymore like she used to. For a man to look at the money and go, well, she's a lot, but the money's good. So I guess I can tolerate her for a little while. Ain't nobody going to put up with her. She's entirely too much. You know, she runs people ragged. Let's see. Looking on TikTok. Uh, Florida Salt and Sass says it's pretty grotesque. That she thinks these are adoring fans when the reality is they're cheering her to unalive herself. No one that likes you wants to help shove you off this mortal coil faster uh, than Nut Dragger pushed you into that boat. What? So here are some of the comments. Let's look. Yeah, so this person saying, I wasn't expecting you to try my local fast food joint. Other people saying, next try. Next time, try their Pansit, Canton, Asado, Halo Halo, delicious. So people talking about food and suggesting food to her. Uh, Snow says, please do a Kuwaiti dessert video showing us their sweets. Are you freaking kidding me? As if Chantal needs to eat more sugar and more carbs. So clearly there are some feedy people in her audience that they love food and they feel like they found their tribe by gravitating to Chantal. YouTube, you need to do your job. Seriously. You really need to do your job. All right, guys. I think that's it as far as the Twitter catch up. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do a react to that ridiculous Burger King mukbang. No, thank you very much. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to put y'all through that. I did the Twitter thing. That's all we need to do. So we're done here. Uh, I've got some various things that I need to do today. Uh, more laundry. Uh, preparing for my neighbor's birthday party. So I'm going to be in and out all day, but I want to get this done first. So I hope you guys have a really lovely day today. It's a beautiful day. Please enjoy your day and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.